salute to you all, the brave never fall. This is the very first official podcast of something I'm very proud to be able to share from people all over the world from this point forward, one person at a time. I'm going to say up front, if you're new here and this is your very first time starting this journey, this is a good starting point, but you can hop on the train anywhere with any of the videos. So if this is one year down the line, three years down the line, five years down the line, doesn't matter. Is This is not a one, two, three, four, or five step podcast or channel. You can hop in anywhere, find one that appeals for you for that day, pick it up, listen to it and share it to somebody else who needs that message. Subscribe, share, like, comment, all that stuff helps build this channel and this community and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode as well. So as I said, this is the very first official podcast for The Brave Never Fall. And what is The Brave Never Fall? It is something that I came up with, the concept of The Brave Never Fall, actually maybe around 2017 when I was looking for a new career path and I was thinking about what I wanted to do. At the time, I was a custodian at a high school, or excuse me, a middle school for a very big school district. And I was following in the footsteps of my mother, who was also a uh, custodian after uh, she took it on as a, another job after she retired from uh, General Motors. So I liked my custodial work and it was hard work at times, but I, I realized I liked the physical aspect of it. I didn't so much like the mental aspect. And the mental, I mean, I like to be challenged not only physically, but mentally in everything that I do. I like things when I get done with work that day, I want to feel like I made a difference. And I didn't really feel like I was doing all that much. Uh, I did work my way up to doing certain things like I was a supervisor and I, you know, uh, that's all good. But I wanted more out of my life. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. And I had to sit down and ask myself, what do you want to do with your life? And one of the things that I wanted to do with my life was I wanted to help people. I just didn't know how I wanted to do it. So I started thinking about something I wanted to do since I was a kid and I was be a police officer. So I dove into everything been a police officer and I was very close to going to the police academy, signed up everything, ready to rock and roll. And for whatever reason, I realized something didn't feel right about it. I, I don't know if it's because I thought I was too old or I doubted myself. I don't know. But I started thinking instead of investing all this time and money into police training, maybe I should do something else on a more of a personal level, which was personal training. So I was at the time around uh, probably 30, 35 pounds over the weight I would like to be. I wasn't fat. I called myself skinny fat. I was a bodybuilder. I liked, uh, I, I ate a lot to put on muscle and I'm not a very big guy. I'm actually right now I'm around five, eight. And at the moment of this podcast, I'm around five, eight, 150 pounds, but I'll, I'll suck around to this uh, point in a moment. I'm going to set up where I came from. And I, in 2017, I, I just was not happy with the way I looked. I wasn't happy with, at the time I was married, uh, at the time of this podcast, I'm divorced. But at the time in 2017, I was married and it wasn't going good. I was making so many mistakes. I don't blame her at all. Um, she made mistakes as well. But for me, it was really all on me. I, there was a lot of things I could have done differently. I really wasn't happy with myself mentally. I wasn't happy with myself physically. My uh, I was drinking a whole lot. I just was not in a place where I felt like I needed to be. And I have started getting this sense like I wanted to help people. And it was weird because in helping people, I think I was really just trying to help myself. I was finding out ways. How can I help this person? How can I help this person? How can I help this person? And I started trying to do that in my marriage. But at that time, it was a little bit too late. Um, I needed not to help other people at that time. I needed really to help myself. I just didn't see it. But the Brave Never Fall actually came from when I started in the police academy and when I started looking into online training, I decided to go ahead and not do police training and go with the National Academy of Sports Medicine and become a personal trainer. That's a journey I'm actually still on at this moment. Um, I would love to be a master at uh, not only personal training, but doing seminars and motivational speaking and inspiration and all ty different types of things. Personal training does not always mean, you know, get into CrossFit training shape or, you know, that's or lose a bunch of weight. It, that's not all that personal training does. That's 
a ton of different types of personal trainers out there. It's not all physical. A lot of it is mental. Um, your brain's a muscle. Any training, just like any other muscle in your body. But I remember um, being on, a guy calls me up and he's like, hey, you know, they give you an interview uh, basically before you get into Nat- Natural Academy of Sports Medicine. Why do you want to be in the Natural Academy of Sports Medicine? And I said, I want to help people. He's like, okay. And has that been a lifelong passion? I said, yes, it has, sir. And he says, uh, okay, well, um, you know, we had a little bit of a chat and he said, okay, well, you have an email address. And at the time I was an exotic animal breeder and I was just getting out of that and trying to focus on, I was just wasting way too much money on that. And that was affecting my marriage as well. And I was like, I need to focus on something that's a little bit more realistic here. So I ended up saying, uh, no, I don't, uh, let me, uh, I want to make up a new email address just for you guys. So I can just start off fresh with a whole new thing. And I came up with the email, the brave never fall, but I had made that brave never fall email based on when I was going to go into the police Academy. I had forgotten that that was the email that I, I had gotten up and I was thinking the brave never fall, the brave meaning, you know, police officers and, uh, any, not just police officers, but, uh, anybody who helps people, a uh, fireman, paramedics, you name it, you know, doctors, that type of thing. They're all brave people and brave people like that never fall. So that's how I came up with the email address. And I used that email address, um, ended up uh, getting divorced and everything. And I would just remember, I, I would always use the email address and people would say, oh, that's such a cool uh, email address, the brave never fall. I like that. I like that. I, I got that so much that I started using it um, with some of my Instagram posts. I would always put on that, the brave never fall. And then I started uh, doing salute to you, the brave never fall. Hey, you know, salute to you. I would salute everybody. And that was a form of respect to me. It's like, if I gave you the salute, that means, you know, you're cool. And then it just happened to rhyme. It was like, I would say to people, salute to you all. When I, if there was a group of people, salute to you all. And I'm like, um, that started rhyming. Salute to you all. The brave never fall. And I was saying it as a joke. And then after a while, people, if I didn't say it to certain people when I was at work or whatever, they were like, what are you having a bad day or something? I'm like what? And they're like, where's my salute? You know, where's my, the brave never fall. I look forward to it every day. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know? And I started realizing that I had a gift for helping people in so many different ways. And one of my gifts was that even though I got divorced, even though my dad died when I was 14 years old, even though there were certain things in my life that didn't go the way that I wanted to, I always had a smile on my face. But, I, you know, you're going to get down on yourself on certain days. And your mind's going to take over and your mind's going to have all these thoughts going through your head. And it's going to be like a mouse on a track just going and going and going and going. And you just have to stop and think, is my life actually this bad? Or am I perceiving it to be this bad? How many good people are in my life? How many people are mooching off of me? How many people are really there for me? And that's when when things started clicking. It was after the divorce, after I had time to think and reflect on all the things that I did wrong, all the things I could have done better, all the things I I let her do to me that I didn't say anything about that was bugging me, um, my lack of boundaries for myself and for other people. I started thinking about all that and I started saying to myself, that wasn't the person I know I am. That person, that monster was not me. And it made me start thinking, oh, okay. You got to quit worrying about everybody else right now. And you need to spend a long time worrying about yourself. And that's what I did. I decided the brave never fall had to start within me and then filter and channel outwards and let that positive energy reach other people. And that is what led me to losing the 30 pounds to get down to 150. I decided to start taking on challenges that I never thought I'd be able to do. And I signed up for a marathon. Not only one, but two. And I never ran a marathon. I used to hate running to school. I used to purposely try to skip school on on the mile long run days. I just hated running. I was a very good athlete. I played basketball. I was a boxer. I was really good at uh, football. I, I I knew how to play. I was just a very small guy. I was like really tiny my whole time in, in uh, high school and early on in college. I had a late growth growth in, in uh, college. Um, when I was 21 years old, I grew, grew four inches. So when I graduated high school, I was 5'4". I'm 5'8 now. So I have a very athletic body. I just never thought about running. And I think it's because it sucks. <laughs> running sucks. Every time I go for a run, it sucks. 
but I went ahead and signed up for the marathon. I knew I needed to drop a lot of weight. I still didn't get down, uh, and I, and I took it easy. I just did a I did a ten k, which is six miles, and I was shocked because the very first day I went to train for it, thinking it was gonna suck, I ran almost seven miles like it was nothing. And I just thought to myself when I when I got done, like, what the hell have you been holding back in yourself? You just ran six miles like it was nothing, and you're forty years old, damn near forty years old. I was 39 in my first marathon. Ran the marathon, and um, I crushed it for my standards. For somebody who was 39, I, I ran it in an hour, and I didn't walk one time, and I even held back at times. I, I could have ran faster than that, and I didn't. And I was like, you know, okay, well, now you're going to run a half marathon. You're going to run a full, and I'm in the process of doing that now. I can run 13 miles like it's nothing. I can run 26 miles like it's nothing, really. I it's, it, And, but I... I didn't know I could do it. And the whole point of this is I forced myself to do something that I never thought I could do. And it was very physical and hard. And the cool thing about it is that I came out of it a winner for myself. My son showed up that day to see me run that first marathon and my ex-wife did. And it was one of the most beautiful, pleasant, most proud moments I've ever had in my entire life because it showed my wife, excuse me, my ex-wife, it showed her that I was a different person because she would be the first one to tell you, Mike ain't running no marathon <laughs> when she was with me. We were together 10 years. She, he ain't running no marathon. That dude drinks way too much. He, it's like he's a bodybuilder. He's too heavy. You know, he's, he doesn't even, he's, he comes home, he's playing video games and watches movies all the time. You know, he's like, he's not that type of person. And I wanted my son to have a memory of me that nobody could take away from him. It's burned into his brain. He saw his daddy cross the finish line. And it was, and ever since that moment, I I felt like, you know, for my ex-wife, I'm going to be the best friend to her I could possibly be. Uh, for my son, I'm going to be the best dad to him I could possibly be. And I knew I wanted to be that before the race, but right at that race, I realized I'm all in with it now. I'm going to wait for myself to be the best version of myself, but I'm not going to be passive. I know it's going to take time, but I'm going to make sure I'm on that and I'm going to do that with everything in my life. If there's something I want bad, I'm going to be relentless. I'm going to go after it every single day. I'm not wasting another minute. Another minute, another second of my day would not be wasted being passive, procrastinating. If it's something or someone I want in my life, I am going to go after it 100%. And when I get knocked on my ass and I get knocked down on the days where I'm in the dumps and I don't have it, I'm going to pick myself up. I'm going to understand that made me stronger and it happened for a reason. I am on a path and I'm on a journey. And there was no sign on that journey that says, hey, it's going to get easier in about 25 more steps. Another day, it's going to be easier. None of that ever happened. None of that is going to happen. There's no signs. I can make artificial signs and put them up. But why? (laughs) You're not going to get every girl that you want. You're not going to have the best relationship with your mother, your father, any family member. There are going to be friends that you thought were like brothers and sisters to you. They're going to leave your life. You're never going to hear from them again. You don't understand why. You're going to mess up. You're going to let people down. But the good thing about it is, is you always have time to make up that stuff. And that's what the brave never falls means. No person who is brave in this world, if you're a warrior and you get up and get after it every single day, You will never fall. It's impossible. You may stumble. You may fall to one knee. You may be down on all fours, but your body will never fall flat on the ground. You will never drop dead from it. You will not. As long as you understand whatever you're going through, you need to go through it. And it's happening for a reason that you can't control other people. And some of the shit that happens, it sucks. But you have to get over it. And get with it and accept it and be honest with yourself and other people. Some people don't like the honesty you're going to have with them. Some people are going to say, well, why do you care so much? Why do you care about this race so much? Why do you care about this person so much? Why do you care? Why can't you just leave it alone? And you want to know why no one should ever have the right to tell you that? It's because they're basically telling you how you should live your life. They're basically telling you when they say to you, hey, you shouldn't feel this way. 
but you shouldn't feel that way. I don't like people telling me to do that. So I don't like people. I don't want people to think when I talk to them that I'm suggesting they should be a certain way because every person deals with their problems the way that they need to deal with them. But I will say this. There has never come a time in my life where I felt like I should sit back and allow people to tell me how I feel in my heart. If you know, you get too emotional, you to this, you to that. That's all very true. There's nothing wrong with being emotional. There's nothing wrong with being honest with your feelings. There's nothing wrong with saying you live life by your heart. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I love living life with my heart and my intuition because it lets me filter through the bullshit of life and through people. When you can trust your heart and you know something doesn't feel right, trust it. It's telling you that for a reason. Your mind will block things out. Your mind will say, no, your heart is not telling you the truth. Actually, this is this. This is very scientific. It's not always scientific. If you feel like somebody's an asshole, they probably are. If you feel like somebody's lying to you, they probably are. If you feel like somebody's trying to pull a fast one on you, they really don't mean what they say. They're just saying stuff so you can be in their life. They probably are. If you feel like somebody is purposely trying to hurt you, they probably are, even though they're saying that they're not. So being emotional can be a good thing. There is a such thing as being too overly emotional. But here's the thing. Everybody's human. You're going to have days where you're super emotional. Super emotional. And you're going to say, why am I so emotional today? Why am I crying so much today for no reason at all about anything and everything? And this is guys included. I'm an alpha male. I don't proclaim it. I, you wouldn't know it. I'm not one of those people who are screaming, I'm an alpha male. And I'm walking around and I'm all buff and all that. That's not what an alpha male means. If you really want to know what an alpha male, if you're a guy, you listen to this. If you really want to know what an alpha male is, really research it and go talk to some real alpha males. They don't even look like your stereotypical alpha males. These guys who are out proclaiming it. Uh, I'm a true alpha male. I'm a guy who's who's quiet, sticks to himself, and I try not to be loud. I don't want people to know that I'm an alpha male. I just know that I am one. But being one, you have days because you are tougher and, and braver than most people. You do have days where you have a breakdown. You've held things in a little bit too long. And that's when the emotional part comes in. But if you didn't have that emotion, you are essentially a robot. You have to have those days where you're brought down to a certain level so you can build things back up and say, okay, well, I didn't realize I was this, this emotional about this. I need to work on this. You know, this is not good for me. I need to work on this. This person's got me twisted. They may think that I'm like, this. I'm not like that. Why am I so, you know, and you have to work on it because you, you, you work on one thing, you fix it, but something else is going to pop up in this place to say, okay, you worked on that. Now you got to work on this. And that's how you got to do it. And then certain things that you worked on, you thought you had all figured out. They're going to come creeping back up real quiet and sneaky like in your life. You're like, man, I, I thought I had that weakness covered. What? Why is that creeping back up? It's because you haven't worked on it in a while. And you have to keep doing it. It's in cycles, just like the seasons. They're just going to keep coming. You have to keep working on each one. You can't just say, oh, I worked on it. I never need to work on it again. That's bullshit. If anybody ever tells you that, they're full of shit. You have to keep working on every single aspect of your life if you want it to be maintained you can't go away from it and come back to it in a year and be like oh i'm still on my game you can't you have to keep constantly working on things reminding yourself of what's important in your life what isn't important in your life you have to get rid of every negative thing in your life the brave never fall is about getting rid of every single negative thing that doesn't benefit you in your life and holding yourself to the highest standard possible when it comes to things places that you work at people that you work at your house um, relationships, never lower your standards to something. Don't ever do that. If somebody's not really that interested in you and you feel in your heart that they aren't, leave that person alone. If you can, if you can, and if you can't, you minimize it. You're going through a divorce and you, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You just try to minimize as much as you can. You be respectful of that person and you move on in plain sight. You have to, when that person is ready to, if you're trying to get back with them, and they're ready to be back in your life, they'll do it. If you, you know, if you have custody problems, you'll figure things out, but you be respectful of that person and their right to have their wishes. If there's a friend or a friendship that you wish was better and it's not, you know, you can't force it. Either that, you, that a friendship should be easy. It shouldn't be hard. A relationship should be easy. It should be hard. And I feel like even if, 
there's people who have left your life and are slowly coming back into it. You take your time with it and you be slow, but you be honest about your feelings with people. Don't ever allow people to feel like you should suppress your feelings. If there's something you need to say, say it. If that person doesn't like it, they have an option. They can say, I don't want to hear that again, so we're done. Or they can say, I appreciate that and I like the way it makes me feel. I would like more of that. There shouldn't be a whole lot of gray area there. Either the person wants you to be a true friend or, or a true partner to them, or they do not. But you should set boundaries for yourself as well. The brave never fall. The brave never fall because they set boundaries and they know their self-worth and they love themselves. It's, it doesn't come from other people telling you the type of person they want you to be. Because there's too many people out there who view you completely different. Because they're trying to base you on something that's beneficial to their life, not everyone else's. These people do not care about you. The people who care about you, they love that you're an emotional person. They love the fact that you're still in their life when you really have no business being in their life. They love the fact that you forgive them, that you don't hold grudges, that you will be there for them even though they're disappointing you. That you did, you are aware of your flaws and you're trying to work on them and you have overcome them. That you're trying to do different things. That you're not going to go away. That you can be counted on. That is the brave never fall. This channel is dedicated to people like that. To people who want to be the greatest people out there, but they are not going to be run over by society. They're not going to be run over by their jobs, by their exes, by the people they're in their relationship with, by family members, by old friendships. They're not going to be run over by anything. They're going to stand up tall and say, this is who I am. I'm always going to be working on being the best version of myself. And if that's not good enough for you, that says more about you than it will ever say about me. Because I will never apologize for who I am. I will only apologize for the mistakes I've made, especially if they're malicious. And I will correct them if I'm aware of them. And if not, then I don't deserve to say that I'm a brave person. Being a part of the Brave Never Fall community as it grows over these next few years is not going to be something that is for people to bullshit their way through. It is hard, hard work because we would dive into things daily about topics that are not always pleasant. This channel will be dedicated for you finding out who you are, what you're made of, what other people see in you. I am not a doctor. This is not a place that you will come for medical advice. This is not a psychiatrist session. This is not a psychology session, a sociology session. These are topics that I'm going to talk through, things that I've been through in my life that I'm going to share my perspective on as if we were just talking, which is why I chose to do this in podcast form and not show my face on camera. Um, you will be able to see my face all over social media because you can find the Brave, Brave Never Fall on our Facebook page, Facebook group, Instagram page, and Twitter. And here, of course. So there will be plenty of times to interact with Dale Tonight Dow. And there will be plenty of time for you to ask me questions at the Brave Never Fall uh, at gmail.com. If you have any questions you want to ask me, anytime you want to talk, this is what I'm here for. This is what this channel is for. It's about helping people. I am here to help you. I am here to listen to you. If you need someone to listen to you, I have done this with tons of people, tons of people. Email me anytime at thebraveneverfall at gmail.com and I will respond to you as quickly as possible. You can also find me if you need daily, daily media as far as motivation. Go to dayliter underscore night underscore dial on Instagram and I'm going to post daily motivational things on that. But I really encourage you just to go to the Brave Never Fall Facebook page. I'll share everything from this YouTube channel on that page as well. If you want to talk to other people, the Facebook group will be growing one group, one person at a time. And I will share everything on Twitter as well. So there are going to be places for everybody to find this. So I encourage you whenever you listen to one of these podcasts, share it with somebody you feel like this conversation would benefit from. This is on the beginning. These podcasts will not be as long as this one. This is an intro, an introduction to this channel to uh, bring people on board and give them a, a basis of what this channel is about. It's, it's all about helping people and giving you the tools to get through each day and know that you haven't been through anything that other people haven't been through. 
I'm going to share my experiences as far as how I got through them when needed. But mainly we're going to talk about different topics about just life in general, life coaching. How do we get through this life together? Because you don't have to go through it alone. You don't have to go through it negatively. And you definitely don't have to go through it feeling like you're not strong enough. You're not brave enough because you are. You just don't know it. I didn't know how brave I was until my wife kicked me out of my ass. I didn't know how brave I was until I ran that marathon. I didn't know how brave I was until I forgave my wife for certain things that she did and acknowledged and, and apologized for the things that I did. And to my friends and my family members and worked hard at work and, and chose to get a very, very hard job and not get the easiest job out there. All of these things is what makes up the Brave Never Fall. It's an open book. You have to be an open book to everyone. And that open book just says, hey, I am who I am. If you don't like it, take it or leave it. But I'm going to be open and honest at all times about who I am. I'm not going to back down from anyone. I'm going to go out and get what I want. And when times get hard, when things look like they're not going to make a bit of difference in my life because it just seemed too small or too big for me to grasp. Trust me, if you want it, go get it. Go get it. Start now. Time is ticking. Do not waste another second. It's October 8th, 2019. Salute to you all. The brave never fall. This is the beginning of the path and the journey. Welcome aboard.